permits do I need for a food truck in California? So welcome to Food Truck Freaks, YouTube's premier food truck entrepreneur channel. We are a brand new channel to YouTube. We are going to be covering all kinds of topics about food truck industry and food truck businesses. In this particular video, we're going to get into what you need to have as far as permits are concerned to get a California food truck up and running and being profitable. We're going to get into that right now. All right, so welcome back to Food Truck Freaks. It is Damien Roberti, I'm founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online. We are actually a food entrepreneur channel. We're not new to YouTube. We have several other channels on YouTube and we will have those links down below in the description if you wanna check those out. We've got over a thousand videos and nearly 100,000 subscribers on those channels. So definitely wanna check that out if you are a food entrepreneur or if you're not looking particularly at a food truck business and maybe someone else that you know is, refer them to our channel and let them check out all of our resources and of course our website, marketingfoodonline.com. So what is it exactly that you need? What permits do I need for a food truck in California is a great question because California is actually one of the most popular states for food trucks. Uh, unsurprising, it's not really very surprising of course because California's got a lot of fantastic locations and locales um, and even eateries and all kinds of festivals and, and farmers markets and such where food trucks are very successful parked. But what do you need to get it up and running as far as the permits are concerned? So let's dive right into it. Number one, an EIN, that's an employer identification number. That is actually sole purpose is for tax IRS revenue purposes. And every business that operates a business that creates any kind of a cash flow and of course profits and such needs to have an EIN. So the IRS knows who you are. It's kind of like a social security number in a sense for your business, not for you, but for your business itself. So the IRS uses your EIN to identify your business and collect taxes from you and your employees. So you can actually get an EIN free. You can either do it online, you can do it by mail, fax, or even the IRS website. Uh, so you need an EIN. Next up, business license. Now, obviously any type of business that operates in any state needs to have a regular business license to operate there. Your city or county where you're at is gonna have a office. Normally it's the business development office. It could go by a handful of different names but you can actually get your business license there. You have to have that, of course, to operate any type of uh, food business even, of course, but any business in general, and that's kind of a no-brainer you definitely need to have. <clears throat> now, next up, driver's license. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's kind of silly, Jimmy. Of course, we all have driver's license. Well, believe it or not, whoever is driving your food truck, if they do not have a license on their person at the time they get actually pulled over or for any reason, if they're in an accident or some, something to that effect, you have to understand something. It's not necessarily someone driving a vehicle to and from work. The food truck itself is your business. It is your work. So if you have an employee who does not have a license or has an expired license and they get pulled over while driving that business on wheels that you own, you're going to get in some serious trouble. So you want to make sure that whoever you hire has the proper driver's license. It's not expired. And believe it or not, even in some states, you may be required to have a, a food, an actual truck driver's license under a different class, a different licensing class for food trucks. Some cities and counties require that and some don't. So double check specifically with the county and city that you're in, in California, when you begin to operate, make sure that they do not require um, a specific truck license in order to drive a food truck. Some places do. So your normal driver's license, the one that you have for your everyday use, may not actually work. You don't know, follow up with that and double check with your city and county. Next up, seller's permit. Of course, you have to have a seller's permit. What this does, this allows you to buy food and other commodities at wholesale prices without having to pay sales tax. Because you gotta keep in mind, food trucks bring together ingredients. Once you create a finalized food product that's served or sold to somebody to eat at, a, at an event, you're gonna collect taxes at that time. And then, then you're gonna remit that to your state or submit that to your state based on this uh, resubmitted schedule that they're gonna set you up for. So as an example, California may say, hey, you know what, Damien? You've got a food truck every six months, we need you to submit, go online, submit your sales tax, however much money you've collected throughout the past six months, and then submit that to us as sales tax. Next up, it would be either annually. They say, hey, you know what? Every year, at the end of the year, come January 1st, we need you to submit all of your sales tax revenues from the previous year. So make sure that you have that set up, okay? Um, so the seller's permit is gonna allow you to buy your ingredients and bring the bring all the products, that, everything that you're gonna be using for your finalized product under the in your food truck, you need to have a seller's permit so you don't pay taxes when you actually transact for those. So if you have vendors, 
that are supplying you with vegetables, fruits, proteins like chicken and meat, whoever it may be, if it's a butcher or a meat shop or something, make sure that they are aware that you're not going to pay taxes on that. Next up is a food handler's permit or a food safety certification. Now it goes by several different names, but all in all, <clears throat> these are actually programs that are set up for your employees and for you. And you go through this program, it's very simple, it's uh, a test that will actually evaluate your understanding of preparing, handling, storing food, keeping them at the right temperatures, how you serve them, hygiene, keeping your food truck clean, sanitize, sanitary precautions, and all this other stuff is rolled into your food safety certification program. These are normally required not only by the owner of the food truck, but any employees who may be on the food truck. So everybody's kind of on the pay, same page. So keep this in mind when you start to hire people that they may need to actually go through this course. And the reason why I say may need is that every, again, every city and county requires different requirements. Some cities and counties may not have this type of requirement specifically for food trucks, and they may have a different one. But in general, normally anyone who is handling, serving, storing, or giving food to the public that they are preparing has to go through some form of food safety certification. Next up, the Department of Health Inspection and of course Permit. So your city and county will actually have a health department, if you're not familiar with this, the health department is set up for them to inspect the food truck itself. And they will either give you a pass or fail grade based upon the inspection. There's a huge list. We won't go into the list specifically right now, but the health department will inspect and you need to get a permit from them. Now, once you go through the inspection, the initial inspection that allow you to even open your doors, they'll give you a certificate and they'll let you know, they'll give you a permit and then they'll say, hey, you know what? Damien's food trucks passed the certification process. You're good to go. You're ready to go for business. Every single food truck in the entire United States has to go through this. This is not something that is maybe in some counties, maybe not. Health departments need to inspect food service facilities or mobile food units. So they will come in and they will actually do that inspection. That's something that's just the norm across the board. <clears throat> Next up, one specific inspection that a lot of people who start food trucks are unaware of. But when you start having deep fryers, you propane take generators on food trucks, electrical work, installing brand new equipment, fire inspections, Fire certification, so you need to have a fire inspection of your food truck take place. And normally, I'm not sure if there's a fee involved with this. Most of the time, um, I believe there is a small fee just to have them come in and check, but they're gonna look through all of those. If you've got any ventilation units above, uh, ventilation ducts above the top of the truck, if you've got deep fryers, um, if you're a truck that's just reselling products that are pre-made, Normally they do not require them, but any cooking food preparation, if there's gas, if there's flame, if there's deep frying that's taking place specifically on your food truck, you're gonna have to have a fire inspection, okay? So the fire certificate is something that's also gonna take place uh, no matter what. And it's actually a good thing because they wanna make sure and maintain that that mobile kitchen on wheels, which could you know catch fire, it could have all kinds of crazy things happen, that it's actually running properly, it's installed properly, your equipment is functioning the way that it should, <clears throat> and so on. So do keep that in mind, okay? So you're gonna have a fire inspection. Now next up, some marketing aspects. So when it comes to marketing a food truck, there's a few things you wanna keep in mind. You wanna make sure your brand is trademarked. If you have a logo, if you have a brand, if you have a look to your food truck, or you've created some type of, of uh, image or logo that needs to have a trademark, make sure that you get it registered as a trademark. If you're not familiar with how to do that, we have a whole bunch of resources below the video. You can check and click on those, and there are websites that can help you trademark if you're not very familiar with that process. But the reason being is that down the road, as you gain local fans and local notoriety and you, you have a following, if you will, you can take that actual brand, you can take your logo and begin to sell merch. Okay, hats, you can sell shirts, you can sell t-shirts, sweaters, you can even create a website for a food truck. Send your customers there. If they love your product so much and they love the look of it and they love your brand, you might even begin down the road to start selling, let's say, uh, marinades, some spice blends that you use that you came up with on the food truck. You can create a product, but you have to have it registered. You gotta have that brand, that logo registered and trademarked so nobody else takes it, okay? so. Keep that in mind, of course you will, on the exterior of your truck, you'll have what's known as a food wrap. So the, the outside portion of your food truck, uh, the food wrap itself is gonna contain your logo. It's gonna contain a trademarked uh, logo. You wanna make sure that you though have it legally protected. <clears throat> Next up, mobile food facility permit. So in many counties and cities that operate food trucks or have food truck vendors, they require you to have a specific 
a location, a commissary kitchen, a commercial kitchen, whatever you may want to call it, food facility, um, that you are attached to. What I mean by attached to or registered with is that there's a certain commercial kitchen or commissary kitchen, let's say, in California, in your city, and you have to have your food truck registered there because that is going to be the location of prep. That's going to be the location where you get your water for the day, the fresh water tanks get refilled, any wastewater, any trash, everything has to go through a, a, some type of commissary kitchen or commercial kitchen. So you need to have that permit, you need to be registered there. So many of the places require you to have a mobile food permit stating that you've got that specific food facility tied to your truck. You know, if you're preparing a lot of ingredients, getting things prepped for the day, you know, slicing fresh fruits, veggies, meats, maybe you're pre-cooking a lot of stuff and you're warming it up on the truck, you gotta make sure that you've got that location registered as well. Now, you also need a registered non-PO box business address in California. They actually require that. It cannot be a PO box. You can't just have some random little box that's attached to uh, a local shipping store uh, down the street that that's where your business address is. So you need to figure out whether you have to register your commissary kitchen or your commercial kitchen. That's gonna be your, your actual business address. Some places do allow you to do that. Or you may have to have an office, some type of small office space that is a specific location for your business address, but you can't use PO box. And of course, lastly, food truck insurance. Of course, if you're operating a food business, uh, you getting business licenses and getting bank accounts and such, you want to make sure that you have a food truck insurance policy. And that is a very simple policy. Normally, the cost for food truck policies around can be anywhere from as low as 800 to about 1200 a year, roughly. You shouldn't be any much, much more higher than 1200 a year. But on average, the food truck insurance policies run about 800 to $1,200 a year. That's going to obviously be tied to your LLC, which you also need to create a incorporated entity. Uh, LLCs, the limited liability, creates protection for you, of course, and, if, and, and in any situation where someone gets sick or ill, they can only sue and go after your company, not you personally. So make sure you get yourself an LLC. And why do I say LLC? Because LLCs are very simple to form. They create a great barrier of liability protection between you and your business. And also having that food truck insurance policy is going to be the second layer of protection for your food truck. So these are some permits. These are a little bit of what you would need to get a food truck started in California. And definitely subscribe to the channel. As I mentioned before, we're going to have tons of brand new content up on Food Truck Freaks. We also have a podcast. You can check out Food Truck Freaks on the go. We have a podcast with tons of other resources. I think we've got about 50 episodes up there already. Uh, so what permits do I need for a food truck in California? That is the list. You definitely want to check it out. And I'll see you guys on our next video. Thanks for watching Food Truck Freaks. If you are interested in creating your own food truck and you're trying to figure out how to do that, be sure to check out these additional resources and our website. Check out the links in the description for more information on how to create a food truck business, successful food truck business that is, and we'll see you guys on our next video.